Hi there, it's Lindsay Upton the Quilt Quine and today I'm experimenting with my Bonina L890 overlocker cover stitch machine to see if I can use it to bind a quilt. So, I have got on a binding attachment which is held on with an accessory holder. It's the 36mm version which means that I have to feed through 36mm wide strips of bias binding. Now like most quilters I tend to work in imperial or inches and that doesn't quite work out for cutting the strips. It's somewhere in between around about an inch and a half to an inch and three eighths ish. So what I did was I got my cutting ruler and I measured exactly 18 millimeters and I've put a little strip of tape down just to show me where I should cut. So, I've got a selection of strips to play with. I've got some jersey, some bias, and also some straight cut strips. I tend to have a lot of bits of leftover binding after a project, so I've been using those. A little bit of spray starch will help, and of course the other alternative is to just buy some bias binding ready to use. As a professional long arm quilter, I'm often asked if I will bind customer quilts when they're finished. Now we're not talking about show binding here, we're talking about everyday utility binding. So if I can find a way of doing that quickly and easily, I'm very happy. So I think the binding attachment will really help with that. And I've come up with the simplest way of getting a good result quickly and easily. I would say that it's based on the Amish version of binding where you have four strips going along each side of the quilt and the ends are tucked in neatly either with a little bit of machine stitching or hand stitching at the end. It's definitely the easiest, smartest, quickest way to go about it. Here I am in front of my Bonina L890. I have got the stitch number 23 selected which is a three thread cover stitch narrow using the left and centre cover stitch needles and the lower looper. So I'm using the yellow, green and purple thread guides. I have got some binding wrapped onto a binding baby dolly that's sitting on the thread rack as well. And I've been doing some practice pieces just to check that I have got the binder positioned correctly. Here I am sitting at the machine now, ready to have a go at some practice pieces. I've got some little chopped off pieces of quilted material. These are just left over from other projects. What I've done to stabilise the edge is just overlocked down each side. I've got a selection of sample bindings here, some bias, some stretchy jersey and also some straight cut fabric. It's worth experimenting with the widths to see how you get on. This is the binding attachment. I've got it attached to the machine with an accessory holder which is very simple. The nice thing is that it will swing out like this so that I can get the ends of the binding posted in the slot. So the best plan is to have a pointy end, slide it in the slot and help it in with your tweezers. So you just push it through until you see the little end poke out the other end. And there it is, it starts to make a little fold. So you can pull a stretch through and then position it under the foot of the machine. I'm using the clear foot so that I can really see what's going on. I've already experimented with just sliding this backwards and forwards until I was happy with where the needles were going into the piece of bias to check that the stitches are going to be close enough to the edge to catch it all on. So that's great. Then I'm going to grab a little piece of quilted fabric just to check that it all lines up nicely. So I'm sliding it in to the binder mouth and I should just be ready to get going. I could have this binding attached to a spool but I've just got it in my hand and the idea is not to let it flop down and add any weight. So let's just see what happens when we get stitching.
I suggest that you don't go terribly fast and you always make sure that this piece of quilt is pushed into the edge wall of the binding attachment. And it's rolling nicely. And I think it looks good. Once I've reached the end, I can slide it out so that I can cut it off. And then I'll be able to have a good look and see what's what. OK, I have now removed the practice piece from the machine. And as you can see, the stitches are in a good place. They've attached it nicely. And if I flip it over, you'll see the cover stitch on the back. So it's definitely caught everything in very nicely. Once I'm happy with my practice pieces and the size of my strips, I can get going onto a real quilt. OK, so I'm going to use this small piece of quilted fabric to practice how I would attach binding quickly and simply in the Amish method of four strips, one on each side. Here we go. There are several inches poking out at the top end which is what I want. My fingers are just making sure that the edge of the quilt butts up against the wall of the binding attachment. And then I want several inches, two or three inches, off the end. And then I can cut it. If I had made myself a nice long stretch of bias binding, I could just carry on. But once you're happy with your practice piece of quilted fabric and binding, you can either go ahead and practice on another little piece how you get round the corners or you can just go straight to the quilt that you want to do because it really is very easy. So now I've made sure that I've cut a nice long piece of binding to go all the way round my little quilt. I would advise if you're piecing your own binding that you make a strip a fair bit wider than you need it to be. The seams need to be pressed open and any little ears need to just be trimmed off because that allows it to go through the binding attachment nice and neatly. Right, here we go. We're going to try and do all four sides. So I've got a strip of about three or four inches of binding sticking out the top of the quilt. Let's get going. I go right to the edge of the quilt, then I swing the binder out and I'm going to cut this here. Then I'm going to lift the quilt out. Next I'm going to trim this edge absolutely flush with the next edge of the quilt with scissors. OK, so that's the top end. This is the next corner. We're going to swing the binder back into position. I'm going to do a few stitches just to stabilise everything. Then I'm going to push the little quilt in again and we'll get this next side done. Gently does it. There's the fold going in and I have completed my second side. I'll swing the binder out, cut it off and I'm going to remove the little quilt from the machine. Once again I'm going to cut this tail absolutely flush, like that. So we've got a dangly tail there and a dangly tail there, but this edge has been trimmed. Let's put this back under the foot. Then we're going to do side three. Swing that binder out. Let's make a cut. It's a couple of inches there. I'm going to trim that flush again. So now I have three dangly ends and a neat end. Now before I do the fourth side, I'm going to cut this original strip off. So now I have two dangly ends and two flush ends. This is side four. And I just continue for a couple more inches. 
and I can snip that off. Having done that, you can see that I've got the little quilt all bound and I've got four strips hanging off each end. Now I'm going to trim each one to about an inch long and I will fold them back in each other. OK, each one has been trimmed down to about an inch. Then the idea is that you'll just fold and fold like this. Secure it with a pin or a clip or glue, whatever you want. And then my solution would be to just run a few hand stitches along here to tidy up that corner. You could do it with a domestic sewing machine as well. And that is easy Amish style binding. Four strips, not complicated, very neat and tidy. I'll show you when I have secured the corners. Now, while we have the machine set up with the binding, if I wanted to make a series of straps or belt loops, I could just carry on and stitch this without any quilt in here and I would get a lovely piece of belt loop. A little bit like one of these, but as long as you like. So here's my tiny little quilt with its four strips of binding done with the binding attachment. It took me about two minutes to do these corners by hand. I haven't done a great job because hand sewing isn't my thing. But anyway, it still looks very neat and tidy. So what else can you do with it? Well, I was thinking if you didn't want to have to deal with corners at all on a quilt, then you could round them off and just carefully go round the curve all the way round and meet. I'll show you how I would do that. I think this is a great thing for not just making quilts, but making placemats as well. And you could even have a go at round placemats. I wonder how that would turn out. So I'm going round my round table mat that I have made out of my sample. I've shortened my stitch length. I'm going nice and steadily and I'm going to make sure that my fingers help to guide the edge of the round place mat into the binder attachment. I've got to get all the way around and then hopefully we'll see how we join the ends together. Now we've nearly made it round to the beginning so what I'm going to do is cut this original tail off and I might even have to just remove a few stitches to make sure that this piece of binding is really close into the side of the placemat. We have to eyeball a few inches of tail and then cut a little bit off and cut the extra bit off. Now I'm going to fold this edge in and I'm going to stick it with a little bit of glue just to hold it in place when it goes through the binder. I might even just snip a little bit off each of those corners so they tuck in nicely. A dab of glue on the end, squash it down. Okay, I've got the end folded in and glued. It's a little bit sticky, hope it's all right. And I'm going to try and come right round and cover up the original end. Just have to guide this in so that it doesn't get caught. In it goes. There we are. I've gone all the way around and just over the edge a bit. So I should be able to pull this out. That's not a bad join. Perfectly acceptable for table mats, I should say. And it could certainly be used on a quilt if you decided to round off the corners and just attach one long strip of binding in one go. I think with a little bit of practice, I could get that really neat. I think I could get really quite good at this.